Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your SmackDown review. So, you know, another boring show, another week for WWE and, you know, Clash of Champions. This was the go-home show before Clash of Champions. And to me, it seems like they don't even care that there is a pay-per-view on Sunday. This is probably, I mean... You know, I guess this would speak volumes. This was probably the most careless, boring, go-home show I've ever seen of SmackDown in a very long time. I mean, this was going through the motions if I ever did see it. We started off with um, AJ Styles uh, talking about, you know, the, the title match against Jinder on, uh, on Sunday. The Singh brothers come out, and what followed was probably one of the, the worst uh, scripted things I've ever seen in my life. The verbiage here was terrible. I mean, the way how these, these two guys, you know, were interacting, it was the Singh brothers and, um, and AJ. You know, I don't know if it was so much that it was scripted or they didn't know what to do here, how to cover the time, but they really just sounded like a, a bunch of, like, confused children here. It, it, it really seemed bad with a guy like AJ that's capable of so much more. I mean, you can tell that AJ was probably trying here, but the way how the Singh brothers were pleading, it was, it, it, you know, I've seen the Looney Tunes put forth better acting than this that was more realistic. I mean, I, I you know, at least Bugs Bunny was convincing to Elmer Fudd you know, in a lot of those cartoons here, I'm not convinced. You know, they were saying, I'm going to be in your corner. And, you know, it just kept going around and around. And the Singh brothers were saying, oh, you know, he, Jinder made us kiss his feet. And his feet smell like cheese. And I was like, what the, what? Like, enough already. It sounds like it was written by a fucking kindergartner. No. Kindergartners would be too smart. That's an insult to fucking kindergartners. This is like it was written by chimpanzees. Now that's insulting to chimpanzees. I don't even know who could have fucking wrote this. I mean, you know, it's like unless you were completely brain damaged, then had your brain taken out, put inside a blender, then put back into your head. You know, I don't fucking know how the fuck anybody could write Something as bad as this. And then, of course, the, the Singh brothers are lying. So, I guess it was that Jinder beat up the Singh brothers last week. And, you know, they're just... They, he just got frustrated. It's not going to be like he's kicking him to the curb. And I don't get why. It's like, you look at a promo like this, and why does he need them? Uh, Charlotte defeated Ruby Riot, that wretched-looking, fucking disgusting woman. Um, you know, they, they basically repeated the same thing as they do on, the same thing that was on Raw, again! So, N N Natalia, you know, attacked Charlotte during the match. I don't understand if the whole concept is the Riot Squad, why are they just lumberjacks at this pay-per-view? Wouldn't this actually, what they just did, be the logical pay-per-view match? Shouldn't it just be Ruby Riot and Charlotte? What what is Natalia? Nobody wants to see Natalia. You know, it's she's very uninteresting. There's nothing to this girl at all, which is sad to say. I mean, we all want to like Natalia because she's the daughter of a great wrestler, Jim the Anvil, Night Hard, great nostalgia there. But the way how they presented her over all these years is no good. She, she's not fun to watch. She's not entertaining. There's, you know, she's a decent wrestler, but, you know, that's not enough. Being a, de a decent wrestler is not going to have me coming back week after week wanting to see Natalia. And I don't want to see Ruby Riot either. But anyway, so they beat up on Charlotte. Then, then they, uh, the, you got Naomi running down to the ring. And the three girls... Sarah Logan, Liv Morgan, and, and, and Ruby Riot. They beat up Charlotte. They beat her up, left her laying. They put the steel steps on her face. They're about to crush her skull. And then you have Naomi coming down to the ring 
and the three girls bolt out of the ring like fucking Kane or The Undertaker hit the ring or some shit. No, it's just Naomi. So you're telling me three girls called the fucking Riot Squad. They're going, you know, so you've got Ruby Riot, you got Sarah Logan, who's the bigger, tougher one, and, and they're about to crush Charlotte's skull, and they're running away from one girl. Running away from a three-on-one situation. Wait, fucking retarded? Like, are you serious here? Like, right away, you look at the first segment, you look at the second segment here, who the fuck is writing this shit? Road Dog is the head writer on SmackDown. How the, how the fuck could this guy be, you know, active during one of the greatest times in wrestling where where things were more logical, where things played to psychology more? Now, I know McMahon says the final word on everything, but, I, I mean... You know, some of these ideas at some point have to be road dogs. And then when they get up on, on the on the uh, entrance ramp, then all the other uh, women come out and they attack the riot squad. So, you know, there you go. You know, you have just a bunch of fucking nonsense. It, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Why would three girls run away from fucking one, especially when they just destroyed one of the other girls, the best one, so, you know, there's something mathematically and psychologically wrong with that. Uh, Bobby Roode interfered in the Corbin-Ziggler match. Um, you know, I, I kind of really didn't get this. Like, you know, he, he just attacked Ziggler and, and that's the end of it. There's no intrigue or anything. You know, and they want to make Bobby face, uh, Bobby face, Bobby Roode the baby face here. And he's interfering in, in matches. Uh, you know, it's not like his character is some type of anti-hero that would just storm into the ring like Stone Cold or The Rock. So, you know, I, and plus it was like it was just cold. You know, like nothing. Just walk into the ring, DDT Ziggler, and walk out. You know, there's nothing interesting about that at all. The Bludgeon Brothers defeated... Um, some jobber, and Colin Delaney returned. Who? Yes, Colin Delaney. Remember that, that skinny, weird-looking kid with the long hair from ECW circa 2008? It was like a weird, very odd storyline where Tommy Dreamer was taking Colin Delaney under his wing. This was kind of like when ECW was really waning and they lost a lot of their stars and they were struggling to have a roster, so they kept, it. so Colin Delaney, fit for, for the new fans, think of him as the James Ellsworth of, you know, like, almost a decade ago, that, that's basically who Colin Delaney is, and he showed up again in WWE, but that wasn't the story here, the other jobber uh, that Delaney was teaming with, they picked him up for this big power bomb. And he let out this, like, blood-curdling stream. And I thought that that was fucking hilarious. Uh, and, you know, Corey Graves did too. You know, uh, Corey Graves, he has to ruin everything. But, you know, thing was, the scream was hilarious. And I wish they would do funnier things like that in wrestling. I am going to say that that was probably... See, that is funny. That is a guy trying to get himself over. Not the Singh brothers with, you know, trying to act extra goofy in the fucking first segment, acting like fucking cartoon characters. No, I'm just going to, I got to give credit where credit's due. That little scream right there, I guarantee you they didn't tell him to go out there and do that. But now you see that, that they're posting videos of that online. Like, and people liked it, you know, people saw the show like that part because it was a nice little touch. And it sounded like you're there to do a job. So, you know, and you can't really get any offense in on, on, on uh, Rowan and Harper. So you got to, like, improvise here. And I got to give credit. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, but he did a good job trying to get himself over by adding a nice little touch to the match. So kudos to him. Um... Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens came out. They, uh, they they said they're starting the Yep movement. 
Zayn and, and Owens were wearing shirts that, you know, th they were the yes shirt, but the S had the P over it, so it was yep instead of yes. You know, okay, you know, it was a nice little touch there. And they said, you know, um, they they know that Shane is going to screw them in their match on Sunday. Brian says he wants to see the match go fairly, so he's going to be the second referee. Um you know, they tried to play off the Yes movement, the Occupy Raw thing from 2014, um, which, you know, in retrospect, I remember that I, I bashed the segment, but it was still better than, you know, a lot of the shit we get today. So, I mean, kind of looking back on it, maybe the Yes um, thing wasn't that bad. I, I mean, I wanted to make fun of it because it showed all the nerdy, smarky-looking fans in the audience, so... I, I I don't know, but anyway, that's what they were hearkening back to here. So, uh, the say I I don't know. You know the thing is, again, I'm not excited for this at all. This storyline, it's like them versus the system, but they could be doing something more interesting here, especially with this. This is probably I'm going to tell you. I think this is probably going to end up being the main event of the show. I mean, watch them do this as the main event on a show called Clash of Champions. Because I'm going to get to that in one second. So you yeah, had Rusev and Aiden English defeating the Usos. Um, I don't know. Something about seeing Rusev on the side, like catching his breath and Aiden English actually getting the win. See, that's the problem here. Rusev is like this big burly guy, and here you have Aiden English doing the dirty work. Then Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, uh, they're out there, and, and and Gable is like, man, this guy is such a fucking nerd the way how they make him. He's tripping over his words, um, he's trying to be funny, and he's trying to come up with puns. And, you know, Shelton's there to tr kind of back him up and kind of be like, okay, well, I'm a little bit cooler than you, so I can kind of, like, certify all the nerdy shit you're saying. And I'm just like, my God, listen to Gable's voice. <laughs> he is like Seth Rollins, who already has that kind of annoying tone of, ah, that, that ultra nasally, ah, 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 voice. But it's like, if Seth Rollins fucking put his mouth on that balloon thing at McDonald's for the fucking helium. Like, the voice. The voice. Stop. My God. Ugh. Nails on the chalk. Stop. Guys like that shouldn't be doing promos with the fucking voice. Ah, man, the ears, the pain. God. And it, it just sounded like New Day was bored on commentary. Oh, God, no. I don't know why New Day's still together. A anyway, um, so Owens is ready for his match against Naka Murphy. Um, Renee Young interviews Randy Orton. Randy Orton is probably saying to himself, what the fuck am I still doing here? It, it, it's like, Orton here in this promo, it's like, he just seemed bored here. Like, what the fuck are you even doing with Orton, man? What a, what a waste of Orton's talents. They're not, you know, I've been saying this for months and months. What is Orton even doing? Like, seriously. He was the champion at the beginning of the year. He won the fucking Royal Rumble. He, you know, you danced around with a couple of, like, random matches with him. And you have one of the biggest stars just standing here, just in a, a tag match. You know what I'm saying? A fucking tag match at the pay-per-view. And so, all right, so Owens beats Naka Murphy. You know, Naka Murphy was on the mic. He goes, yep, uh... Very funny, because he doesn't know how to speak English, so he can only do one-word promos. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so, there you go with that. So, this is the way how we end the show. 
So Daniel Bryan was the special guest referee. You know, he counted the three for Owens. And, we, you know, we're going to have a fair... Shane McMahon is nowhere to be found on this show. <laughs> he's going to be the referee at... Uh, he's going to be the referee on Sunday. He's not even on the show at all. Last week, no champion. You know, uh, AJ's not there. He shows up this week. Okay. So, there you go with that. All right. Um, so I think they were on the European tour. I mean, not the the, the Indian tour, whatever. Last, this is probably why they weren't there. So you know, I don't know where Shane is this week. But anyway, they have this as the last thing on SmackDown. So you're going to tell me Clash of Champions is not going to have a championship match in the main event because this match is just going to be if Kevin Owens. And Sami Zayn can keep their jobs or not. That's the stipulation here. And now, not, not to say that that in itself something's on the line, but it is called Clash of Champions. So how the hell did they work themselves into a corner here where it's quite obvious that if this is going on last on all these shows, you're telling me that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are bigger stars? And this is what kills me. You have... Wade Keller talking about how they're burying Owens and Sami Zayn. And here they are, main event thing. Owens is getting a win over Naka Murphy. So, but the thing that drives me crazy is, how the hell is it called Clash of Champions? And you're just putting two non-champions on the show in the main event. Because it obviously is going to go on last. Watch. You're going to probably see... Styles and gender. I wouldn't be surprised if they open the show or, or they're in the middle of the card. Because you know it's not going to be second to last. They don't really book that way. I'm just saying that this is this is pretty fucked up booking to say the least. I mean, you give the title to AJ Styles and he's not even going to be the last guy on, on a B pay-per-view. This is a throwaway pay-per-view that doesn't even matter. I mean, you only have what? Like, was it? Um, you only have a handful of belts anyway, right? World, tag, U.S., women. So there's four belts on the line. You know, they could have easily combined this to make it, you know, a, um, you know, put both brands together, and it probably would have been better if it was a dual-branded show. But they're not going to do that. So, you know, because they're saving it for Facebook, and we're going to get to that in a second, guys. I'm going to do a separate video on that new Facebook thing. So, anyway, there you go, guys. There's your SmackDown review. Got a few more videos planned for today that I'm going to post. This has been your YWC champ, signing out.